Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Now take a careful look at these two jugs. One of them is yours, and the next one is your friend's. And you want to compare the amount of water each of you have and figure out who has more. Hmm, they both look like they're half full. Does that mean that they have the same amount of water? Well, no. Look at how jug number two is bigger. And that means that it has more water in it, even though they're both halfway full. So you can say with confidence that jug number one has less water than jug number two. All this water is making me thirsty. Let's look at another example with soda. But this time we can't see how much soda is in each can. All that we're told is the fraction of soda in each can. So let's compare each of them to a can that is half full. Okay, we're going to look at two cans at a time using a number line. First, looking at the can that's three-fourths full. Well, three-fourths goes here in our number line. Half of four is two, so one-half is the same as two-fourths, and that goes here on the number line. Three-fourths is closer to one, and therefore is a larger fraction. One-half is less than three-fourths. Okay, now let's look at the can that is three-eighths full. And that goes here on the number line. Half of eight is four, so one half is the same as four eighths, and that goes here on the number line. And since three eighths is less than four, well, we know that that one is less than one half. And this means that one half is greater than three eighths. And just one last one, the can that's three twelfths full goes right here on the number line. And when dealing with twelfths, half of twelve is six, so we know that one half is equivalent to six twelfths. And, well, three twelfths is definitely less than one half. And this means that one half is greater than three twelfths. Ooh, what a great job you did comparing fractions to one half. And look at all the numerators for each of the fractions that we just compared to one half. They're all the same. When the numerators of fractions are the same, we want to use the denominators to help us compare. And when the denominator is larger, that means that each part is actually smaller because we've split the whole into more pieces. Take a look. See how the two pieces of the rectangle that are divided into three parts are actually larger than the two pieces of the rectangle that's divided into ten parts. Two-thirds is greater than two-tenths because one-third is greater than one-tenth. And so if fractions have the same numerator and different denominators, the fraction with the larger denominator will actually be smaller than the other fraction. Maybe you can try it without any visuals. Now tell me, which is greater, five-elevenths or five-sixths? Well, both of these fractions have a numerator of five, and since eleven is greater than six, Five elevenths is smaller than five sixths. Awesome. Okay, a math problem coming your way. Okay, you need to compare the fractions that each shape represents to one half using less, greater than, or equal. Starting with shape A, we will create a rectangle the same size with one half shaded. Now, since there are a total of ten sections, Half of 10 is 5, so our fraction that represents 1 half should have 5 sections shaded in. And look at that, they're the same. So we're going to use the equal sign to show that they are equivalent. And next we have shape B. Okay, there are 8 total sections, and half of 8 is 4. So our circle that represents 1 half should have 4 sections shaded in. And it looks like shape B is less than one half, so we're going to use the symbol for less than. And our last shape, C, has six total parts. So half of six is three. And since fraction C has four sections shaded in, it is greater than one half. So let's place the greater than symbol in between the shapes. Nice! What if we compare two or more numbers? Now you have six-sevenths of a candy bar left, and your friend has four-fifths of the same type of candy bar left. Who has more of the candy bar left? Well, let's create a picture to understand these fractions even better. Huh, look at that! 
Each of the bars has one piece missing. But notice that the fraction with the larger denominator has a piece missing that is actually smaller. A smaller piece missing means that there's more candy left overall. So you have more of the candy bar left. When two fractions are both missing one piece, the fraction with the larger denominator will have less missing and will be greater than the other fraction. Without drawing it out, compare the fractions 4 fifths and 6 sevenths. Both of these have one piece missing and since 6 sevenths has the larger denominator, it will have less missing and be larger overall. Therefore, 4 fifths is less than 6 sevenths. You are on a roll. Just one more problem. Which fraction is larger, 6 tenths or 4 ninths? I think we should use a strategy that involves some mental math. We can use the denominators of the fractions to compare the fractions to one half. Looking at 6 tenths, we know that the denominator is 10. And half of 10 is 5. So 5 tenths is equivalent to one half. And this means that 6 tenths is greater than one half. Okay, perfect. Now, moving on to 4 ninths. The fraction is split into 9 parts. And what is half of 9? Now, odd numbers can be tricky. 8, which is 1 less than 9, is even, and half of 8 is 4. 10 is 1 more than 9, and half of 10 is 5. So this means that half of 9 is in between 4 and 5. Or in other words, it's 4.5. So 4.5 over 9 is equivalent to 1 half. And that tells us that 4 ninths is less than 1 half. Well, since 6 tenths is greater than 1 half and 4 ninths is less than 1 half, we figured out that 6 tenths is greater than 4 ninths. Pretty cool strategy, huh? You did great today comparing fractions. You used all different kinds of strategies, like number lines and drawing out shapes. And we even explored some patterns, like how if fractions have the same numerator, or if two fractions are missing one piece, well, we can look at the denominators to compare them. And we also learned how we can use mental math by comparing fractions to one half in order to compare the original fractions to each other. We covered a lot of material today. I'll be interested to compare this video to the next one. See you there.